Hi NCCP, it's Pastor Melissa coming to you to bring you online worship. Uh, and I am sitting here in presumably the Dunbar's pew because I see Luke left his worship guide here. But as always, we know that these reading guides are available on our website. And so if you are watching today, or what we want you to do is make sure you note that you're here. We have a place online where you can mark your attendance. Uh, make sure you do that during these weeks when we are worshiping remotely because there's a special contest and there will be a prize uh, for one of, our, one of our viewers, one of our worshipers. You'll find too that on this site it's not just about the message that we bring you each week, but you'll find other content. You'll find um, prayer requests that are coming forward. Um, you will find opportunities to give. Uh, and, and ways that we can continue being God's church in the world, even if we're in a process of social distancing. Um, I know a lot of us are already weary as we set out in these weeks ahead. Uh, I know last night I drove to New York City and back to bring uh, my oldest daughter and her college roommate home. And I just want to take a moment and lift up um, all of our college students and people who work in education. It, it's a very difficult disruption. I was just on a conference call with some of our chaplains in our denomination and on university and college campuses. And, and for students, especially seniors who are facing um, cancellations of their graduation, internships that they have to leave all of a sudden. Um, it's just, even to move to online learning is difficult, but we just really want to support and, and send a special bit of care and love to our students who are really experiencing disruption. Also to our friends and in the community who are being called up as part of our National Guard. We want to lift you in prayer, especially during this time, uh, as you have to, to do your work to preserve our public safety. Um, and, and of course, all of those on the front lines in our hospitals and, and those who are working to bring healing, we lift up all of them in prayer. But um, I do, we just wanna surround all of our community with love and care during this time. But let's pray together. Holy and gracious God, as we come into this space, we are connected and tied together digitally, but yet it is your spirit that brings us to be one. It is Christ's love that binds us together. And it is in the name of Christ, our Lord and Savior, that we come this day to worship you in spirit and in truth, just as the scripture calls us to. And we ask right now that in this hour, may the words of my mouth and the meditations of all of our hearts be acceptable and pleasing to you, O God, my rock and my redeemer. Amen. We have looked at several different songs uh, in these past few weeks as, as we've experienced our time together in Oasis. And this week is probably my very favorite Garth Brooks song. Pastor John would make fun of me for that because he, he knows that I tend to like things that aren't other people's favorites. Let's just say that. Uh, so this is a great song called Ask Me How I Know. And it's an interesting tune that has to do with a, a man talking about really being the wild guy who can't really settle down uh, until he finds that one, that one perfect person who's able to make him leave behind some of his ways that are, um, that are of ill repute. And he always kind of jokes about how um, his own, Pastor John's mom used to pray for her sons to find wives that would help settle them down. And, and so he'll sometimes say that I was an answer to his mom's prayers because uh, of uh, some of the fun that he would have as a younger person. Um, so as we, as we think about this, the, the refrain of the song has this line, ask me how I know. And when I think about that song, I think about this passage that we have this week as we're looking at the story of Jesus and the woman of Samaria. It comes to us from the Gospel of John. And it's this story where Jesus has been with his disciples. He's been out teaching and he's left Judea and he's heading back toward the Galilee. And in order to do that, he has to go through Samaria which was a place that 
um, that was kind of in a hot desert area and there was a well that was known as Jacob's well. Jacob all the way back in Genesis had built this well and it's, the, it's noon, it's the heat of the day, the hottest time, and Jesus stops to take a rest at this well. And the scripture says, a Samaritan woman came to draw water, and Jesus said to her, give me a drink. His disciples had gone to the city to buy food, and the Samaritan woman said to him, how is it that you, a Jew, ask a drink of me, a woman of Samaria? Jews do not share things in common with Samaritans. Jesus answered her, if you knew the gift of God and who it is that is saying to you, give me a drink, you would have asked him and he would have given you living water. The woman said to him, sir, you have no bucket and the well is deep. Where do you get that living water? Are you greater than our ancestor Jacob who gave us this well and with his sons and his flocks drank from it? And Jesus said to her, everyone who drinks of this water will be thirsty again. But those who drink of the water that I will give them will never be thirsty. The water that I will give will become in them a spring of water gushing up to eternal life. The woman said to him, sir, give me this water so that I may never be thirsty or have to keep coming here to draw water. I'm going to stop there in the gospel for just a moment and talk about how through this whole series, this has been our message, that Jesus is the one who brings water to us that leaves us never thirsting again. He's the one who's able to bring this, this thirst quenching wholeness to us where we feel like we're, we're satisfied by God. And we search for that in lots of different places. We, we search for it with other people, with drinks, with activity, with all the things that go on in our lives. This time, especially in the life of the church and in the life of the world, where we have to stop and we're not allowed to gather in some of those places that have been so life-giving to us, that's where some of us are really going to be called to that time of introspection, where we're asking what is it that I'm looking for outside of myself and outside of my family and outside of my faith that I've been thinking has been quenching my thirst when in reality there's a deeper spiritual issue going on? This is a time of Sabbath, a time of rest, a time for us to really slow down and think about what it is that matters most to us in our lives. And for some of us, it could be a really dry place. But what Jesus is offering here in the scripture to this Samaritan woman is this well springing up that never leaves us thirsty again. And when Jesus is offering that to the woman, it's not enough for him to just say, I'm going to give you living water. But the story goes on. Jesus said to her, go call your husband and come back. The woman answered him, I have no husband. And Jesus said to her, you're right in saying I have no husband, for you have had five husbands, and the one you have now is not your husband. What you have said is true. The woman said to him, sir, I see that you are a prophet. Our ancestors worshipped on this mountain, but you say that the place where people must worship is in Jerusalem. And Jesus said to her, Woman, believe me, the hour is coming when you will worship the Father, neither on this mountain nor in Jerusalem. We get that today, right? Because we're not worshipping in our church, but we're worshipping at home. We're worshipping wherever we may be traveling. Um, but the hour is coming, Jesus says, when the true worshipers will worship the Father in spirit and truth. For the Father seeks such as these to worship him. God is spirit, and those who worship him must worship him in spirit and truth. And the woman said to him, I know that Messiah is coming. When he comes, he will pro proclaim all things to us. And Jesus said to her, I am he the one who is speaking to you. Jesus tells this woman, 
the first person in the scriptures to hear from his mouth that he is the Messiah. And he knows all of these things about her. He knows that she's a Samaritan and, and isn't even someone who can be in association with the Jewish people. He knows that she has this history where she has all of these former husbands and now is with a guy that she's not even married to. And yet, this is the one Jesus chooses to reveal himself to. And not only that, as he's telling her all these things that he knows about her, he's still giving her this hope and telling her that worship is something that comes from within us. It's in spirit, it's in truth, and it doesn't matter where we go and, and what mountain we're standing on, but it's how we are connected to God. And that's why I think about that song, Ask Me How I Know. Jesus knows all things because he is the Son of God. Jesus knows everything about this woman, everything about her struggle, and he still picks her to carry this gospel message. She's going to run into her town and start to tell all of the people there about having this encounter with the man who is the Messiah. And she said, and, 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 she's, and it, it's told to us that many Samaritans from that city believed in Jesus because of the woman's testimony. He told me everything I had ever done, she said to them. And so they came and they started to, they asked him to stay with them and more and more people believed because of this woman. Ben Witherington says that in the end, this woman seems to fulfill the role of disciple better than any of the 12 that Jesus has called because she goes forth to share the good news about Jesus. She takes this gospel and she carries it into the town and lets people know about the good news. She knows that Jesus sees her, understands her, and is an offering to quench all the desires that she has within her heart. He is living water. And that's the good news that she goes and she carries. One of the very first preachers, one of the very first evangelists, one of the very first people that God uses to carry on this story. And last week we talked about Nicodemus coming to Jesus at night in the third chapter of the Gospel of John. And as we look at these side by side in the scripture, what we see here is that this Samaritan woman who is unclean, who comes from a, a shady background, in a lot of ways is proving to be an even truer disciple at this point than a religious leader. Brothers and sisters, this is the gospel. That God takes us as we are. That God gives us living water. That God shows us, he knows us from within, but yet still invites us to be part of God's community and then sends us to go and tell others about this good news. This is our challenge as we're people in this time of, of distancing and, and being uh, cut off from some of our friends and neighbors. Think about how it is we can connect deeply with our faith to come to the well that is Jesus Christ. And as we do that work in this season, as we are preparing our hearts and our minds and our souls to understand truly what it is to serve a Messiah who knows everything about us and offers us a drink that never leaves us thirsty, how can we creatively share that good news with our friends and our neighbors? How is it we can go and tell them about what Christ has done for us? How is it that we can be disciples living in days that are uncertain, times where we don't know what the next week or even month ahead will hold? How do we still come to the water, sit with Jesus, let him tell us something about ourselves, and then go and share that with others who also need to know that Jesus is living water. Go in peace. Enjoy this time of refreshment 
and look at it as that, a gift of God to bring us refreshment to our souls so that we can find ourselves acceptable and worthy in God's sight to go forward and be his disciples in all that we do. Would you pray with me? God, we thank you for the witness of this Samaritan woman. We thank you that she's able to go into her community and share what God has done by revealing who he is to her. And we pray right now, God, that as our schools are closed, as many of our businesses are calling us to work remotely, as so many people aren't allowed to be gathering in the places that are, are so much a part of our lives, that we can draw deeply from you in this season, that we can experience your living water, and that we can emerge from this time even more equipped to be your disciples in this world, to go to our neighbors and say, come and see this man who knows everything about me and invite them into a life-changing encounter with our Messiah. Thanks be to God. Amen. Thank you.